Harvestman of Britain and Ireland is a web app from the Field Studies Council's Tomorrow's Biodiversity Project. It is an interactive guide to the Harvestman of the UK. The interactive content of the site is provided by the TomBio ID framework and driven by a knowledge base on Harvestman created by Rich Berkmar and Paul Richards. Among the strongest features of the site are the species descriptions, so that's where we will start by clicking on this menu item here. To see information on a species, simply find its name here and click on it. This displays the species accounts, images and, at the bottom, the knowledge base character states for the species. The species accounts aim to concentrate on field identification and ecology, the things of greatest use to biological recorders in other words. Normally there is a link to the corresponding page on the Spider Recording Scheme website which includes a distribution map and other useful information for the species. The images, one of the major features of this site, are nearly all from the comprehensive collection built up by Paul Richards. You can zoom an image using the mouse wheel or pan it by dragging. Moving the mouse pointer over the top, left or right margins of the picture exposes controls which are used to navigate to other images for the same species. These checkboxes up here allow you to remove any of the three elements. For example, removing text and knowledge base values just leaves the images. If you want to narrow the list of species on the left, you can type the filter like so. Also, clicking on these chevrons here exposes some hidden controls that you can use to sort the species, clear the filter box, or deselect the species. A useful feature is the ability to generate a web link that will take people to exactly the same view that you're currently seeing. So, for example, if I want to reference this species description and image, all I need to do is right click the mouse and select the top item. That creates and copies the link that I can now paste anywhere, e.g. into a Facebook post, so that people can come straight to this same place. For now, I'll just paste this into another tab on the browser so that you can see it in action. The next tool we'll look at is the side-by-side -side comparison which we can reach from the comparisons menu item here. It presents the same species selection controls, but this time it allows multiple selection, and as we select species, their knowledge base values are displayed over here. The species on the left is the one that all the rest are compared against. If we want to move one of the other species to this position, we can just drag it like this. The darker blue the colour, the closer is the match between the character values, and the more orange the colour, the less they match. Grey cells are used for characters that are marked to display only in the knowledge base. White cells are used for characters that are not applicable to the displayed species. To remove a species from the display, simply click it again to deselect it. Here I'm going to remove all of these and then use a filter to display only Leoban species and then compare these. I'm going to compare some images by clicking on these camera icons. If I want to see certain pictures of Leoban and Black Wally and Leoban and Rotundum side by side, I can remove the others and then increase the size by dragging the cell to the right, and I can select the pictures I want.
There are lots of options on the context menu, evoked by right-clicking the mouse, that enable you to quickly select groups of species. For example, I'm going to clear the selection and display only Paralegolophus agrestis. Then I'm going to use the context menu to select and display the two species which score the overall closest match to it in the knowledge base. Just like other visualisations, there is an item at the top of the context menu to create a web link to whatever view I'm looking at. Now let's look at the multi-access key visualisations. These are available from the drop-down menu here. I'll start with the two column key. I can enter character states over here. Maybe they're the character states that match a specimen I have at hand, or I can see in a photo. Or perhaps I have no specimen and I'm just interested in exploring the knowledge base, see which tags I have, which character combinations. Characters are grouped by type. I can limit the displayed characters to certain groups by clicking these tabs, or see them all together with this one. I'm going to enter some trident characters over here. On the right I can see the species react to show how they match the character states I've entered. We can clearly see that three species are good matches, whilst this group here is somewhat intermediate, and all of these in the right hand column are poor matches. Help on characters and character states is available either by hovering the mouse over the character name, or by clicking the character name. As I move the mouse over the name of a harvestman here, a picture of it pops up in a tooltip. If you find these distracting, you can turn them off using the right-click context menu. In this two-column visualisation, you can also expand the species rectangles to include a picture by clicking on them. Hide the picture again by clicking it again. When the All Characters tab is clicked here, a few more controls become visible. One of them enables you to hide all of the characters for which values have not been specified. Another enables you to clear all character input. Let's select those trident characters again. Now we're going to change to the single column visualisation. You'll notice that the character states we specified before are still there and that the visualisation is presenting the same overall scores and ranking of the species. However, this particular visualisation just presents all of the species in a single column. It uses the extra space to indicate the individual character matching scores for each species. So it's a great one to use if you want to know why a species scores as it does. Here we can clearly see that the top species score well for all three character states entered. Individual character scores can range between minus one and plus one but character weighting often reduces these extremes. If I click on an individual score here, I can see that the weighting of 7 limits the, the maximum score for this character to plus 0.7. In fact, these three species at the top are registering maximum scores against all three character states entered. If we want to see these character scores without the weighting applied, we can use this right-click context menu item to switch between the weighted and unweighted scores. Note that the overall score is always the sum of the weighted scores, whatever you display on the individual scores. The circle pack key presents a radically different visualisation of multi-access key. This one emphasises the taxonomic relationships between the species. The species which best match the specified character states are shown in large blue circles. Those which are not good matches are small and orange. The best matching species are always bordered by a dotted black line. We can zoom in and out of this visualisation by clicking on any circle or by using the mouse wheel. We can also drag to pan. Use the right click context menu to emphasise different taxonomic levels. For example, let's change the labels from species to genus.
We can also choose to display the species without honouring their taxonomic relationships using the Ignore Higher Taxa menu item. Just like the other visualisations we've looked at, the multi-access key visualisations include an item on the context menu to build a web link that will take others to the same view. Written help and guidance on using each of the tools is available from this information and help menu. From here you can also find information on the Tombio ID framework and the Harvestman knowledge base. You can use this citations item to generate citation text for the knowledge base and or the ID framework and its tools.